Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Devo with Boo this Friday, June 25th, 2021. And man, I feel like one of the disciples today, um, you know, because they, they were, you know, walking all over the place in the Middle East. And I bet you Jesus taught with a lot of sweat. And, uh, and uh, the disciples were sweaty when they were doing Bible studies. And uh, today I just got done um, booking down here to the office uh, from the house on the bike and uh, how to do it in record time. So uh, I, I wanted to be in here so bad at the Devo. I was like, I got to get there quick. I got to get there quick. And anyway, here I am. And I'm with Jesus, who's already in the house. Blessed Friday morning. Hey, it's great having you here. Uh, hey Zeus, absolutely. So you can always check out the archives right there at the YouTube channel. As you see below me, it's 1 Timothy chapter 5, part 1, and it says this. It says, Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, with all purity. So this morning we want to look at how we treat one another in the church. Now, this is kind of cool, but it kind of implies that we are invested again in people's lives. And you get that over and over and over in the New Testament. And that is we are invested in one another's lives. You know, do you go to church and do you just basically not talk to anybody? Or do you just talk to your friends? Or do you find those other people? Do you, are you, do you have older people? Do you have younger people in your life? Now... This is important too, and uh, I kind of have a theory on something um, that when we don't understand church to be older people and younger people, then really we're not in the church, but we're in, I would say, like a group. Now, follow me on this, because I think this has had some huge ramifications in the church over the last 25 years. And, and sometimes people, especially when they're younger, they want to be a part of a church that has a lot of, quote, young people in it. So what they do is they find churches that are more or less like just college groups. But they're big. They're really large. And they kind of do things the way they want to do them, like you would if you were in like a youth class or something like that, you know, where... You kind of do what you do to fit the age um, and the likes of the age. And people like it. They get excited about it. They go hang out with people. And, uh, and anyway, and they call that church. But I love this passage. Do not rebuke an older man. Exhort him as a father. Younger men as brothers. Older women as mothers. Younger women as sisters with all purity. Notice how this Paul's defining the body of Christ in this short two-verse passage. Older people, younger people. There's a mix of people. And this is really what I uh, really find that can be quite dangerous with these groups. Is that when you substitute a church, older people... And younger people making up the assembly. Church just means assembly, a gathering. When you see the what I call the like entire church, older, younger, coming together, then there's something that takes place. Character gets built up. Now this is why. Is because God wants to well, God wants to build our character and make us like Christ. And in order to do that, we need to learn how to walk like Christ. We need to learn how to lead. We need to learn how to exactly lead. How to walk meekly in our leadership. Meaning how to have strength but under control. We need to learn how to practice the fruit of the Spirit in our leadership towards maybe people that are younger that we're teaching. We also need to learn how to walk humbly in a submitted way to those that are older and learn how to treat them with respect and honor and help them and bear with them, persevere with them. And when you do that, 
in the the big body of Christ, older people and young people, it gives us the opportunity to build those character qualities. For instance, when you go to a church like Calvary Christian Fellowship, we have young people, babies, all the way to elderly people in their 90s. You have that huge range of life. Every spectrum of life is represented in the fellowship. And that promotes opportunity to learn how to interact with different age people. So now I have an opportunity to correct this other version, this paraphrase version of the Bible says, never speak sharply to an older man, but plead with him respectfully, just as though he were your own father. So now you start looking at older be- people and you start treating them with respect and you want to be gentle with them. You don't want to correct them in a harsh way. Uh, that's what he says to Timothy. Um, so he and he said then he goes on and he talks about of course the the older women and uh, he talks about how to look at the younger people look at the and lo- make sure Timothy that you're looking at the younger girls uh, ladies as with all purity you're working on your purity within the body of Christ treating the younger ladies in a in a good way in a pure way not not trying to manipulate them. <clears throat> Why? Because false teachers, if you want an example of this, read 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. And 2 Peter chapter 2 talks about false teachers that manipulate elderly people and women. And so Paul says, hey, you know, you know, treat the younger women with purity. See, if you're and this is important is that and again what I'm saying is that when you go to a church that is just your age and that's your church and when you're younger in college and you know young 20s or 30s and you go I want a church that just has 20 and 30s in it you forfeit all the opportunity and all the character building that is necessary for you to glorify God by being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you don't have older people to walk respectfully before or to humble yourself before. And you don't have young people to lead in all purity. You've, you've thrown that out. Your church is just a big youth group. And that's what a lot of young people seek. So they go, hey, I'm not going to go to the church on Sunday because I'm not really into the church on Sunday. And I'm not really into the church on Wednesday, that midweek Bible study thing in the big church, because I go to my group. Oh, yes. Anybody who knows church culture knows what I'm talking about. I go to my group. And nothing's wrong with being in a group with your peers and learning how to love people your age. That's great. Um... But let's face it, a lot of times when you're hanging out with your peers, you're just chatting with them. You're not really learning. You're not learning how to submit to them because they're your peers. But when you listen, to, when you have an elderly person who's telling you something, and they might be pretty straightforward about what they're telling you, and they want you to know what they're saying, well, that's, that's different. Now you have to implement some Christ-like character and go, hey, you know, I might not like this personally, but what, is, what would be the God-honoring thing to do here? Well, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father, young men as brothers, older women treat him as a mother, younger women as sisters with all purity. So I hope you understand a little bit of that. I always recommend for youth young people, high school, college, in your 20s and 30s, be a part of the church at large, the big church, the church that has elderly people and has babies in it. That is the body of Christ, the fullness 
of the body of Christ. And when I say fullness, this is what I'm referring to. Um, so there's no kind of misunderstanding of me. In uh, First uh, Peter chapter 4, let me read this in, in verse 9, talking about the way we should relate to one another in the body of Christ. First Peter chapter 4, verse 9. And before I do read this, I want to say hi to Paula, and I want to say hi to Marsha, and uh, I hope, and Michael's in the house too, which is awesome. I'm totally stoked with that, and he's happy that it says God is the same every day. Just try to breathe only one day at uh, the week of the week. Try to breathe only one day of the week, <laughs> the breath of life. That's oh man, that's great, Michael. But uh, it's so good to see everybody in the house. But let me read First Peter chapter 4, verse 9. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Do you get this? If you, as we get together as the body of Christ, older people, younger people, together, then what we do is we minister one to another the manifold grace of God. Did you get that? We minister one to another the manifold grace of God. I love that. So that's what we need to be doing is, you know, everybody's got something for you, whether they're elderly, whether they're not. They have something for you. The younger people have something for you. See, if you don't think that way, it, then you only think, you know, people your age, you just want to hang out with people your age. In a sense, all you're doing is feeding your what? Your selfishness, right? You just want to be with people your age. And nothing's wrong with a understanding of learning how to relate with people your age. So there is a place for that. Yes, there's a place for that. You know, being on a baseball team your age, being in a youth group your age, that's great. But if you neglect any time being with your grandmother, your parents, you, as a young person you neglect, or an older person, you neglect being around young people then we miss the manifold grace of God, all the manifold grace of God, the different aspects of the gifts of God that are through different people. And so, you know, this is why I love this passage in 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 and 2. It shows us that the church has all different kinds of people. And it's not going to be easy to relate and to be able to enter into a relationship with every age of person in the body of Christ. But it is important, especially, of course, writing, writing to a minister, Paul's writing to Timothy, to be able to do that, that a minister should be able to work with elderly and to be working with the young. And this is something, not just some special thing for ministers, though. We all are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are all. So we should all be striving to be able to minister one to another, to all different kinds of people within the body of Christ. So it leads us to some thoughts, you know. You know, what is your thought about you know, who you minister to. You know, do you only think of, like, people in your age bracket? Or do you think about other people that, you know, do you think of, hey, how do I treat younger people? Do I engage with younger people? Or do I neglect them? Or do I neglect the elderly? Um, do I find, what do, what do I find is a challenge with working with the elderly? And what do I find a challenge with working with younger people? Or what do I find challenge working with people that are in their 40s? Or, you know, asking these questions and going before the Lord and saying, Hey, God, you know, help me to not shy away. Because a lot of times the reason why we just want to hang out with people that we're comfortable with is because of fear. Fear guides us, not faith. Faith ain't doing nothing. 
in us. We actually are just fearing. So the reason why we're in the groups we're in sometimes can be simply because of fear or insecurity or those kind of things. So we want to check our heart and say, God, help me to step out in faith. Help me to step out in areas that are new. Help me learn how to watch the babies. Help me learn how to teach the four-year-old. Help me learn how to go into the hospice and talk to the person who's 86 years old. You know, help me, Lord, to do these things. Help me to step through those areas of fear and darkness that are in my heart and bring me into a new place, a place of freedom and walking with you. You know, this is important. Now, my own, and that's something to really work on in the Devo. My own little pastoral soapbox, so to speak, is that the church has lost a generation um, of people to this kind of specific age bracket ministry that, that has gone on and has, be, has become very popular over the last 25 or so years that I could tell in my church life. And that is you, you've raised a whole generation practically on this idea of just hanging out with people their age. And so, you know, it's kind of sad. And when you do that, you lose so many character qualities, one of them being commitment to the church, right? People don't know how to stay committed to the body of Christ. Oh, there's not people my age here, so I'm going to go someplace else. You know, these kind of things. And people just kind of shop around until they feel comfortable instead of learning how to stay somewhere and serve and see the Lord do a work in your heart and that kind of thing. And so it's developed, um, I I think, that uh, kind of wanting things your way, uh, you know, that fast food church mentality um, that uh, uh, is so prevalent in in our time. So, hey, it's great to be part of a church for 27, 28 years now. Um, and still just serving wherever is needed. And there's a lot of cool things, uh, and there are a lot of things I fear too. Um, Do I really want to do that? Do I really want to do this? And um, I'm scared to do that. And there's so many areas where uh, uh, our leadership team has asked me to step in and do something where in my heart I'm kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I can do that, you know, or I don't know if I should be the guy doing that, you know. It's like, am am I qualified? And um, But then you take that step out in faith and, you know, you got that, you know, people behind you cheering you on and you you step out in faith and you go, man, that was cool. I kind of learned something there. And so, you know, that, and, and, and there's, there's such a, a fruit that is, is bore by that. And, and I just pray that God continue to um, humble my own heart uh, to continue to serve like that until I go be with the Lord. I just want to be that servant. And anyway, I hope you see how important it is all of us are in the body, the elderly, the young, treating people with purity, looking at them in a right way, not wanting to lust after people, you know. Um, you know, we all, and I just want to maybe clear something up too. Nothing's wrong. We all see people as, a, we can see certain people as attractive. And I want to just make this distinction. There's always, you can't deal, you can't help yourself to be attracted to someone, right? It's like when you see someone or you uh, like their character, you might go, man, I'm really attracted to that person. But attraction doesn't equal lust. So make sure you don't have that equation. Attraction doesn't equal lust. You can be attracted to someone and like their character qualities or the way they look, their appearance, or the way they dress. That is something that you just, you you like, like a painting. Um, And that kind of thing. And nothing's wrong with that. That's just the way you are. You just tend to look at that person and you go, wow, I like that person. But it doesn't have to equal lust. Now, our culture has this equation super wrong. Um, They equal attraction with lust. But that's not what we have to do. We don't need to do that. We can find people attractive. And if you say, no, I'm not going to find anybody attractive. No, I'm not going to find any attractive. Then probably what you're going to do is really struggle. But nothing's wrong with just looking at someone and in your heart going, man, I really enjoy that person. 
I really, you know, I think they're pretty or, you know, nothing's wrong with saying that in your mind. But then realize, then bringing that person before the Lord and say, that's my sister in Christ. or That's my brother in Christ. And Lord, help me to look at them not in a lustful, a desirous, a covetousness way, right? Help me not lust after that person because attraction doesn't need to equal lust. So I'll just end there on that purity thing, okay? So we only got through two verses today, this Friday, but I, I don't know, there was a lot there. It was kind of cool. So um, there's some things for us to even go before the Lord with and just think about and do, do again our little inventory, our little kind of writing on, hey, how do I interact with people? What kind of people do I interact with? And what am I, who am I scared to interact with? You know, why am I not breaking down the children's ministry wanting to serve in the children's ministry? Am I a little nervous about something? You know, what is that? And maybe there's some legit things, you know, in your heart and, you know, in your situation and um, that prevents you from being in there. But maybe not. Maybe there's just areas where you're, you just get nervous and you just need to bring those before God. So anyway, you guys have a good one. Um, looking at a little bit about what you said. Um, we should treat everybody with respect and lift each other up. We can learn so much from the elderly and each other. Yeah, that's what Paul is saying. And absolutely. Um, yeah, I love Jesus. He says, I'm treating my church family like I treat my blood family. And that's that's good, man. That's that's kind of, you guys are getting that. You kind of see that kind of way of going about it. And so um, Marsha says, my church family is just as important to me as my blood family. And man, that, that seems so true a lot of times in our lives, right? Where the church family becomes just, just uh, it becomes family. Um, it really does. It becomes our life. And, um, and uh, you know, I think that's what Jesus meant when he says, uh, you know, he who comes to me will, re- will receive a hundredfold. Meaning you got a hundred brothers now. You got a hundred sisters. You know, I don't have any nieces and nephews myself. Um, but I have so many in the church. You know, and that's that's such a blessing. Um, I was raised uh, 3,000 miles away from any cousins or anybody like that, any uncles or a very, I was raised very much around, not around those people. But the church really became my grandma, my grandpa, you know, you know, your mother and your father and all these things like that. You kind of have more people and sure you love your your biological family and, and you know, those kind of, you do, of course we love them. And we're going to see how important that is to do in this, in this chapter, first Timothy chapter five, but it doesn't, but it also, that doesn't necessarily mean that we don't see these other people as incredible blessings, you know, so much like our families. Yeah. Um, um, so Marcia says she feels totally comfortable with all the different age groups at CCF, and that's great. You, I hope you do, you know. It's always a bummer, right, when the elderly don't like the young and the young don't like the elderly, and they kind of bicker back and forth, right, <laughs> that kind of thing. But it's very much like a family, right? Oh, man. Um, and Paula says she feels comfortable with all ages. Uh, she thinks of being, uh, uh, I think, being in uh, an ICU and a hospice nurse. Yeah, totally, for years has helped me in this area. Oh, my gosh, yeah, Paula. Um, absolutely. You know, those, you know, you're in those situations and, you know, you're working with all kinds of people, you know, so, hey, hey, Zeus, glad you like the Devo, man. You guys take care. Okay. Have a great weekend and, uh, we will Lord willing be with you on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.